Good evening, welcome to the regular council meeting. We'll call the meeting to order the time being 5.30. Number two is adoption of the agenda. Can I have the resolution read, please? Be resolved that the agenda be adopted as presented. I have a mover, please. Councillor Imhoff, second by Councillor Duval. All those in favor, that's carried. Item number four, adoption of the minutes. Be resolved that the council meeting minutes of the September 26, 2023 council planning meeting be approved. I have a mover, please. Council Hretchko, seconded by Council Postunas. All those in favor, that's carried. We have no delegations tonight under bylaws 6.1 for resolution. Be resolved that bylaw number 2023-19 being a bylaw of the arm of East St. Paul to establish designated officer positions be given first reading. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Postuma, second by Councillor Impa. Um, any discussion, questions? None. None? Okay. Call for the question. All those in favor? That's carried. Six point two for first reading. Be resolved that bylaw number 2023 20, being a bylaw of the Arm of East St. Paul, to revise and consolidate a fee schedule for municipal services, be given first reading. Mover, please. Councillor Imhoff, second by Councillor Duval. Any questions or comments? Okay, call for the question. All those in favor? That's carried. We don't have anything under policies tonight. Under finances, 8.1. Resolved that the schedule of accounts dated October 10th, 2023, amounting to $14,500, be confirmed as paid. Now, the mover, please. Councillor Horechko, second by Councillor Posthumus. All those in favor? That's carried. 8.2. Be resolved that the schedule of accounts paid since the September 12, 2023 regular meeting of council amounting to $1,367,629.71 be confirmed as paid. One minute, please. Councillor Imhoff, second by Councillor Horechko. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. Eight point three, please. The resolve that the net payroll and council indemnities for the arm of East St. Paul for September fifteenth, twenty twenty three, to October tenth, twenty twenty three, amounting to two hundred seven thousand nine dollars and ninety one cents, be approved. I'll have a mover, please. Councillor Duval, second by Councillor Posthumus. Any questions or comments? Call for the question. All those in favor? That's carried. And 8.4. You resolved that the statement of revenues and expenditures for the period ending September 30th, 2023, be approved. Moved by Councillor Horechko, second by Councillor Duval. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. 9.1 operations, 9.1.1 for resolution. Whereas the Arm of East St. Paul recently purchased a 2023 Freightliner truck plow and sander to replace the 2006 and 2013 international truck plows and sanders, and whereas the operations department recommends retaining the 2006 and 2013 Freightliner trucks in their fleet rather than disposing them at auction. Therefore, be a result that Council approves the retention of the surplus trucks in the operations department fleet until such time that they become cost ineffective to the municipality. I have a mover, please. Councillor Hretchko, second by Councillor Postumas. Any comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor? That's carried. And then item number 9.2.1. Be resolved that Council approves the service agreement between the arm of East St. Paul and Shared Health to operate their emergency medical response service per the Emergency Response and Stretcher Transportation Act, and be a further result that the mayor and CAO be authorized to sign the agreement on behalf of the municipality. 
I have a mover, please. Councillor Imhoff, seconded by Councillor Duval. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. And under general 9.3.1. Whereas Red River Planning District's current Environmental Systems Research Institute, ESRI, agreement expires on December 5th, 2023. And whereas the ESRI program is utilized in the day-to-day -day use for all planning needs, is cost shared 60-40 between member municipalities and Red River Planning District. Therefore, be it resolved that council approve the three-year renewal contract as follows. For 2024, $7,011.17. For 2025, $7,221.90. And 2026, $7,438.35. And, and be it further resolved that the CAO be authorized to sign the agreement on behalf of the municipality. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Imhoff, seconded by Councillor Postumas. Any questions or comments? No? Okay. All those in favor? That's carried. And that is all we have. So in correspondence, um, and we have um, three dates to choose to go um, to a WMR presentation, public sessions. Do we have to have a resolution for a council to attend or is it just open for council to attend? Okay, thank you. So just a reminder that um, um, council can attend those, uh, you know, within those um, allocated time, and it's advisable that we do. And then any questions that are coming out of correspondence? Uh, oh, Councillor Hretschko, <laughs> I'll give you a second. Yeah. Or do you want Council to go? Don't matter. Uh, you know, WMR, we were having the the John Q thing which we all submitted that we were going to go. And they now changed the date to uh, next Wednesday, which two of us uh, have a red for planning starting at 3.30, so we can't attend. So we Sorry, were, is it? Um, it's it's not in correspondence, it's separate. Did they, is that my, is that the board meeting for John Q that was changed or was that the um, public consultation? The public consultation. Yeah, they wanted to okay. that in. It's here in the morning. Yes. Consultation in the afternoon. The afternoon. Okay. 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 Yeah, they gave us two dates. We can't. No, it's, no, because our thing starts at 3.30 and their choices were one one thirty till 4 or 5 till 7 and we're here till 8. Yeah. You know, Okay, so maybe I'll reach out and let them know that. Plus, uh, plus also uh, the mayor of uh, St. Clemens, St. Clemens, St. Andrews, well, and St. Andrews there as well, and and councillors. So there'll be about ten people can because this is pertaining to budget, and so we have a proposition to Red River. So, so I think probably others have reached out, and I'll also email just to okay. see. They'll probably change it. Somebody that won't be there for sure. sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Councillor Duval? Yes, on this uh, open house plan in 2050, uh, we're looking at the poster. I, I, I suppose that poster is going to be posted somehow all throughout the, uh, the municipalities in the, in the region. I don't know what they're going to do with it, email it or, or what. But in any case, looking at that, um, the average person is going to look at that and say, what is this? And what about this? There's an offer there somewhere, if I'm not mistaken, you can look up Plan 2050 on the uh, website. You're going to look that up and you're going to get a document there that's about 100 and some odd pages long. And the average person is not going to read through that and try and pick out something where they can make a comment. So they're going to look to council their counselor and say, ask, what is this all about? And what are we going to say? I think we have to communicate with our residents over this upcoming open house. So we have an basic understanding of what it is that we need so that they can uh, join in. Right now, you don't get anybody.
you know, it's just the same thing with all the other municipalities, by the way, I'm sure. Um, are you suggesting that we run the poster that they are running? Uh, I'm sure they're going to have it on different media outlets. And then it has a QR code. Um, exact poster. Good, I guess. Oh, what, I, what, I didn't scan the QR code, but I'm probably going to show you uh, some of those bits of information that we got. But uh, I just don't... How many people are going to do that? Well, QR codes are really used, actually. So um, it takes you to the web to a website. It has um, the long term plan for regional planning, so it has some information on it. Then it has you can download the plan, and then it has the meeting uh, dates, and then you can hit learn more. Mm. It's loading. And then there's public notices. Um, has some more information about Plan 2050. And it says that if they're not able to attend the sessions in person and would like more uh, feedback online, WMR planning team will be collecting feedback about the regional plan online. So they'll be able to ask questions online as well. And then there's a short video and then another link to 2250.ca. So I think they've done a good job at um, providing information. And they have, um, then they have success stories. I don't know what this is, probably other provinces that have took it on the same approach. And there's some articles here. What, what they're going to get on that trail of information there, which is all, uh, of course, with WMR, is that side of the story. Okay. WMR, we all know, are extremely proficient at self-promoting to all our materials. Our people are going to ask us, what do you think of this? And we do have thoughts about it that you won't yeah. hear and read anywhere in all those documents that you can get through the QR. Don't you think our residents deserve to hear our comments? Shouldn't we be explaining to them what we think is a problem with the uh, Plan 2050 and Bill 37? Well, Brian, I am... we do have we do have concerns, don't we? Right, but we'll be at those meetings and we'll be voicing our concerns. So our residents will be provided the information that they can attend, and then they would be able to listen to. Um, any questions or concerns that East St. Paul presents at the meetings? My concern is there's not very much incentive for them to even go there. Well, you know what? Over the last year and a half, I've actually not got one phone call or one email from a resident with any concerns to the draft plan, even though you and I are against it, you know, you know kind of thing. So I agree with the mayor that uh, we will voice those opinions and they will, you know, fall on. How many people really understand that draft plan? Well, it's not, I don't know if it's understanding or that they really, it's not going to change their lives. In most cases, the people that live here right now, it's going to change the possible future of East St. Paul. Dramatically, exactly. You know, but hey, but how how many people? I bet you not one person in a hundred in this whole community really has an idea of what this means in the long term. Because what have they seen? They've seen nothing. Always, and I, I don't know how we're going to be able to force people to go to the meeting. I don't think it's we can important. give the information to them, but we can't make people attend. And I am not 100% against the plan. And we are already meeting our target, our density targets. And I also think that there's some, right at this table alone, there's some misinterpretation. So that is why we're going to go and ask those decisions, those questions again, very clear. And we're going to get the feedback. Once again, get the answers. 
but we can only provide to our community the information and the and the and where they can go to the meeting. I mean, you might not have anybody you want to attend the meeting. That's that's the reality of it. You know, but the plan has been out for a couple of years now, and we're got we're getting no feedback from the community. How well has that plan been put out to the community with the understanding of what it really means? You talk to your neighbor. Ask him, did you know this plan 2050? He may have heard about it. Do you really understand what it means? Getting right into the details? Ask anybody. Does anybody know that except the people around this table? Well, we did put out stuff in the in the, in our newsletter, but it, there was no responses. What did it say? No, no, about densities and things like that. And we're still going to bring that up. <laughs> At the open house. Yes, yes, we will. But and we want to bring that up in front of residents. But if they're not there, we're just talking to the wall again. You know. But you <laughs> well, we're not gonna you know try to cause a protest. Councillor Costumus. Yeah, um I agree with both of you, but if I went to all my residents in Sparing Gardens and in the other areas, they wouldn't know. Um, I think we could do like a refresh, like you could have the poster, but put a, along with it a letter stating what this involves, that it's involving the future of East St. Paul, the density of East St. Paul, and, and and future growth. And and people could understand it a bit, like put something in. You know, we have a lot of seniors in that, and they're not going to use a QR code and all this type of thing. Um, we may need something in black and white with it to, uh, to state what exactly it is. It, it's a bummer because I know my neighbors would have a hot clue. You know, I've talked to a lot of people in the community and they even bring up Plan 2050 and they understand Plan 2050. I, I, you know, what would you say to your community about Plan 2050? What would you say to your residents why they need to come to the meeting? What is the message that you're wanting to share with them? that they would come out and, and find out exactly what it's about. It's going to involve higher density and, and how it all works exactly, because there's some concerns they, they would have, but maybe it would uh, address that also for them to understand. It doesn't, so our our bylaw says that our, our smallest lots are R18, which is 8,000 square feet, and the width cannot go less than 60 feet wide. There's nothing that's going to change that bylaw in the arm of East St. Paul. So it doesn't change um, density as much as you think it changes density. We just need to adhere to our bylaws. And as you're meeting those density targets, which we already do based on our, our development that we have, then you qualify, you, you qualify more for funding because now you're part of the region you're, you're working towards the future. Single. Because the reality is, is that everybody in Canada right now is in a housing crisis. And we want to ensure that we're developing as East St. Paul can't right now, because of course we have a moratorium on development, but that in the future when East St. Paul can develop, that we are, cons we are considering different housing types, which we have, and we do have different bylaws now. And uh, so, you know, I think that if we give them the, the poster and they want to attend the meeting, they will. I don't think that we can force them to attend the meeting. And I don't think that we need to make this, um, uh, you know. If there's one. <clears throat> if there's one message we want to get to the people right off the top. This is an important document. It lays things out for a number of years. And it's going to dictate how your community develops from here on in. That's what it's going to do. And uh, Madam Mayor, you are incorrect in what you're saying about our zoning bylaws. It is very clear in Plan 2050 and through the uh, Bill 37, which is the master uh, document, that the capital planning region, which is now morphed from WMR, which wrote 2050 in the first place, 
right in there, it states very clearly the capital planning region will be drafting up the development plans, secondary plans, and zoning bylaws for every municipality. And three years after the, uh, the plan is formally uh, accepted, which is January the 1st, 2025, the end of 2024, so a little more than a year. Three years after that, every municipality has to rewrite their zoning bylaws and secondary plans and development plans to coincide with the new ones that the capital planning board has pushed down. So whose plans are they then three years from now? They're not the municipalities, they're the capital planning region. So Councillor Duval, thank you. And I, I, I'm gonna go to my table here, except for Councillor Empoff, because he was not part of the conversations and question periods that we had with consultants, WMR and the board. Council Duval, you asked that very question stating, are you writing our bylaws? Do we have to adhere to the bylaws that you write? And we were told no. So I'm going to go to the two other members of this table to ask them if that is accurate information. You're right. And, and I believe... Uh, what's, what's the question, Sean, that you're asking? You asked the board, you asked every time we've been in, in front of any, any consultant or WMR board members, in relation to Plan 2050, you asked if they're writing our bylaws and if we have to change our bylaws to adapt to adopt the bylaw that they write. And every time we've been told that they are not yeah. bylaws. Well, it very clearly states it. And uh, the last document we had with this q and A's, it very clearly states that they will. So if that's not what they intend to do, why don't they write it that way? Well, I, I believe the minister, when he was here, he did speak on that. And he's looking to us in future open houses to give them more information. And we know that all the municipalities are against a lot of it. So whether 30 residents come out and voice their opinion, they elected us to represent them. And that's what they're betting on, that you will stand up there and speak in their behalf. Yeah, we intend to do that. Yeah, and, and and that's what we're going to do. And But I keep hearing and I keep stating, like uh, the mayor said, maybe she's tired of hearing it from me, but that is the way that document is written. That is the word. But he sat here and told us that it wasn't going to be. He, yeah, but what, he said they're looking for our input. Right. And they got our input with version one from a whole number of RMs. They didn't change that with version two. And by the way, it doesn't matter what the opinion is of anybody today, whether it's the minister, the deputy minister, or WMR officials, their opinion doesn't matter. What matters is what it is written, the letter of that document, it states exactly. Because years from now, you can, you can bet how these major developing companies are going to interpret that. There is no interpretation, really. It's going to be written that way. So if they don't mean it that way, as everybody says, oh, it doesn't mean that. We'll still have our own bylaws. Well, why don't they change their wording to mean exactly that instead of the way it is now? We but can I, ask that question when we go to the to the uh, of course. We'll take it. Yeah, the sessions. Do you want to add something? Well, I was going to answer to when they were here. Also, I did ask that question, and they he it was more <clears throat> Council of Val saying their interpretation that they didn't think that we would be changing our bylaws and our zoning. But as Council of Val says, it is written that way, and that's the way I read it also. So they were going to get back to us on that. But I still believe our residents. I don't want a resident coming back later and go, well, I got this thing, but I didn't know what it was about. Now you went and did this and it's all that, you know, they should have the opportunity to go with full understanding what it is. Um, Councillor Posthumus, I don't think any bit of this table is saying that we don't want our um, residents to have the ability to go. We can provide them the information, but it's really up to the people to make the decision to attend. And you could be surprised and there could be many individuals from our um, yeah. constituency there, but we can't force anybody to go. We can give them the information. And, um, you know, I'm, 
I just want to be clear because I was at those meetings and the, no, I did not hear from one minister that they thought that they weren't writing our bylaws. The answer has always been, we are not writing your bylaws. We don't have the money, time and staffing to write the bylaws of every municipality. And that was a very direct answer to us. And I'm sure we're going to hear it again. And if we ask them to change the wording, maybe that's something they consider when yeah. before they adopt the plan. But I just want us to be sure of what we're, because tonight we're on camera and we're giving this information to our uh, constituents. And I want to be sure that it's a true reflection of meetings that we've had in the past with other levels of government. Anything else, Councillor Duval? Are you just, are you, are you satisfied with us providing the information via email? Um, I don't know that we have yeah. time for the newsletter. Do a newsflash. No, the, the newsletter is being yeah. as we speak, and it was news. sent out on the weekend. Okay. Are we wanting to send the poster out as is, or is there more information that we want to include with it? Health and if so, uh -huh. but so I can't. Uh, remember all the details about it but i know at least one if not two counselors wrote specifically about this in the newsletters a year ago maybe even two years ago um so there was some information in there from what i remember about that focused on some of the possible pitfalls of the adoption of bill 37 and plan 2050. what would be the harm in pulling out some of those things because from what i remember they were basically the same things we're asking now the 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 province has the ability through this plan thir or bill 37 and 2050 to override any decision that council makes with regard to development so that's important and people need to understand that 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 can happen and just even putting that out there saying hey look these are a couple of the things in there that that you you know general things that we need to be very concerned about Here's the information where these public open houses are. If you want to go and get this firsthand from them, please feel free to attend. Simple. Email blast. Done. Can't, we're not going to be able to, and I don't, I don't think by any mean, any stretch did Councillor Duvall expect that we were going to be, you know, loading up buses and bringing people there ourselves. But I don't, I I, I agree to his point that I don't think the general public understands the importance of this now at, at the table here it was saying that the minister sat here and obviously i wasn't part of this and said they don't think or they, they don't but it's what's on that paper and, and I, I think we can all come up with a time not so long ago where we were getting maybe a little bit of uh conflicting information from political figures right so let's I say we put some a short synopsis out there of some of the things that that we're concerned with or that we should be concerned with, along with that poster, and then people can make up their own minds. If they want to be informed, they'll go. We just have to, in that messaging, be certain that the municipal board will not be overturning decisions that we made based on our bylaws. They would overturn a decision if we went against our own bylaws. So we have to be clear about that as well because the municipal board was very clear about that with us and Brandon because Brian asked that question will you overturn a decision that met our bylaws or vice versa and uh, the chair said no decisions that meet your bylaws that adhere to your bylaws will not be overturned by the municipal board and that was very clear by the chair oh, absolutely yes and of course the big question who writes the bylaws okay so, um, we'll get our messaging out for three weeks and be sure of like let's review that first to be convinced. Yeah. and uh, then we hope that you know those interested attend and the council will be there and council will have their just their questions and we can report back to the public on our questions and our answers that we received now <clears throat> these are scheduled uh, each day, the first one in the morning is 11.30, and that's for the general public. And then there's another one in the afternoon for council and elected officials only. Now, we speak of both, I guess we're entitled to. 
I want to I want to speak it to one where there's residents, hopefully residents there. Because we've already had discussions over the years, councils, and we know where that's gone. I think the intent was um, to divide it up so that there weren't such long wait times of speaking, but I can ask that question and, and get back to you on that. I don't have that answer right now because they have allocated time for elected officials, administration, and other staff members. Yeah, they have two public sessions each day. Three. With that one. Okay. Great. Okay. Anything else on? on correspondence. Okay, so then we have nothing in camera, so I'll have the resolution to adjourn, please. Do you have any Be a result that the meeting be adjourned, time being 6.07 p.m. I have a mover, please. Oh. Councillor Posthumus, second by Councillor Hreshko. All those in favor? That's carried, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much.